Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem number of enclaves. We're given an m by n matrix, which is a grid where zeros in this case are going to represent water and ones are going to represent land, which is the opposite of yesterday's problem. But other than that, this is a pretty similar problem. These types of two-dimensional grid problems almost always require some type of DFS or BFS variation solution. The only thing is, how do we apply one of these algorithms? I'm going to stick with DFS, but you can do whichever one you prefer. The overall idea is going to be the same, though. They have their own problem description here, but I'll make it a bit more simple for you. We want to count all of the land cells of each island. In this case, an island is the same thing that it usually is, a piece of land or basically a bunch of ones that are connected either vertically or horizontally. If there was a one over here, that wouldn't count because diagonally we can't connect them. But this is an island and this is its own separate island. So we have two islands here. We want to figure out all of the islands that don't border the border or the edge of the grid. So this island over here doesn't touch the edge of the grid. So this is an island we identify and we total up all of the pieces, all of the cells of it. In this case, there's three of them and that's going to be added to our result. We do have a second island over here, but as you can see, it's bordering the left side of the grid. So we can't count this to our total. So in this example, our total is going to be three. So the idea is actually pretty simple and we can actually solve this problem pretty similar to how we did yesterday. But I think there's a slightly more intelligent way to apply DFS rather than just going through every single position in the grid and apply a DFS in that way. And this trick that I'm going to show you is actually common. It can be applied to a few other problems. So I think it's worth learning. It's not really a trick. It's kind of a different way of thinking. Instead of running DFS on every single island, why not just run DFS on all of the islands that are bordering the edge of the grid? And that's actually pretty easy to do because we know it's bordering this part if the column is zero, like this column is zero. Everything here, any ones in particular, are going to be islands and we're going to run DFS on those. Similarly, all the way over here, which I think this is column three, on the last column, any ones that would be over here, we'd also run DFS on them. Same thing with the first row over here. This is bordering this edge and the last row is bordering this edge. This is row zero. This is also, or this is row three. So we can do that pretty easily. We can run DFS basically on the entire perimeter of the grid. Only of course for actual ones though. We don't need to run DFS over here. It's water anyway. But by doing that, what exactly do we achieve? In this case, if we ran DFS only here, we would end up with a total of one. What exactly can we do with this one? Because we know the actual result is three. There are three grid cells that are a part of an island over here that doesn't touch the perimeter of this grid. Well, why not get the total number of ones in the grid? In this case, it's four. And let's get the number of ones that are actually bordering the perimeter or the islands that are bordering the perimeter and the entire like total cells for each of those islands, which in this case is just one as we found. And why not take that one and subtract it from the total? Then we end up with three anyway. Now this approach might seem more complicated at first, but it actually is a bit easier to code up in my opinion. And I think it's a pretty interesting way of thinking about this problem. So I think that's the solution I'm gonna be coding up. In the worst case, we might end up running a DFS. And the way I'm gonna code this up, we are gonna still have to look at every single position in the grid because we do have to total up the number of ones and we have to run DFS on the perimeter. So overall, the time complexity is gonna be the size of the grid, which in this case is M times N. And when we do run the DFS, we definitely don't want to have to visit the same position twice, like the same island twice that is bordering the perimeter. So we are gonna have a visit hash set that I'm gonna create. And in the worst case, the size of it could be the size of the grid. 
grid. I will point out though that I'm assuming that we can't modify the input grid. If we can modify the input grid, then we don't need that hash set in the first place. And I definitely think it's worth clarifying in a real interview, can you update or can you modify the input grid? Because it does make the problem a little bit easier to code up. But now let's do exactly that, code it up. So I'm going to start with a little bit of the boilerplate. We're going to get the dimensions of the grid. I like to do that at the beginning. We get the number of rows, the number of columns, and I like to define our DFS before we actually use it. But I do like to have knowledge of what exactly it's going to do. We're going to pass in a couple coordinates and we're going to assume that this is an island that borders the edge of the grid and we're going to return the number of cells that that island has. So our DFS is actually going to be pretty simple. Now let's see how exactly are we going to use it? Well, remember what we're trying to do is calculate the total land and calculate the total land that is bordering the edge of the grid. So I'm going to call that border land, not the video game, but these are both going to be set to zero initially. And what we're going to end up returning at the end is going to be the total amount of land minus the land that is bordering the edge of the grid. So we know what we're doing here. Now we just have to fill in a few of the implementation details. So I'm going to start now iterating over the entire grid. It's pretty easy to do that. Just a couple nested for loops. But what's important here is how I'm going to actually call our DFS. And before we even call the DFS, I'm going to actually add this little line of code here, adding to the land, whatever value happens to be in the grid. Why am I doing it this way? Well, we know land is gonna be a one. So if we see a one, we wanna add that to our total land. If we see water, this is gonna do nothing. This is gonna add zero. So that's good, it works out. We don't need an if statement to check if this is land or not. We can just do this single line. What we do need an if statement for is how we are going to run our DFS. We know whenever we do run that DFS, we're going to be doing it on an island that is bordering the edge of the grid, and it's going to return the number of cells. We know what we're going to do with those number of cells. We're going to add that to our, or not our result, we're going to add it to our land that is bordering the edge. But my question is, when would we want to execute the DFS? Well, we'd only want to execute it when the grid is actually land, like this position is land. So we can just basically say this is equal to true or this evaluates to true. And we are going to add a couple more things. Of course, we don't want this cell to be visited. So we're going to check this is not in our visit hash set, which we have yet to declare. So I'm actually going to do that up above. Visit is going to be equal to a hash set. This is the last part you don't want to forget. We only want to run DFS on the border of the grid. So how do we know if we're at the border? Well, I'm going to add another and condition here, but there's going to be a couple cases. One is we're bordering the left side or the right side, which would mean our column is either equal to zero or our column is equal to the total number of columns minus one. That means it's bordering either the left or the right. But there's an easier way to write this code, at least in Python. We can say, is this C in this list, which contains zero or the number of columns minus one. So it's just checking, is this in this array of values? Or we can say the row is bordering the edge, which means R is in this array, meaning it's equal to zero or the number of rows minus one. So this line of code is just checking, does this coordinate row column, the one we're going to pass into DFS, is it bordering the edge of the grid? Because we only want to call DFS on the edge of the grid. So now we have everything filled in except for our DFS, which is usually the easy part if you're pretty familiar with it, which I recommend you get pretty familiar with it because it's one of the most common algorithms. So DFS, the most important thing about it is the base case. If we go out of bounds, we have to return. So how do we go out of bounds? Well, our row is too small or our column is too small or our row is too big. Row is equal to the number of rows or column is equal to the number of columns or maybe the position that we visit is water. We don't go out of bounds, but we're at water. We don't really want to continue our DFS. We're trying to count the number of land cells. Water doesn't really do anything for us. How do we know we reached water? Well, not grid 
whatever these coordinates happen to be. The value here is a zero, so we're gonna return. And lastly, we might have already visited this position before, so row column is in our visit hash set. So in this case, we'd also just want to return. And what we're gonna return is zero, because on this portion of the DFS, we didn't count any land cells. Of course, if this doesn't execute, we want to continue our DFS. But before we do that, make sure to add these coordinates to your visit hash set or you're going to get stuck in an infinite loop. And now this part is pretty straightforward. We're going to declare our result, which is the number of land cells. We're not going to set it to zero because actually we know this position is land. So that's going to count as one. And now we're going to go in all four directions up, down, left, right, which I'm going to define like this with an array of pairs, zero, one, zero, negative one, one, zero, and negative one, zero. These are all four directions. And we're going to iterate through each of these four directions. DR, DC is what I call them in these directions. And then we're gonna call DFS with our starting position plus DR and starting a column plus DC. And whatever this happens to return is gonna be the number of land cells, of course, cause that's what our DFS is doing. So we're gonna take that, add it to our result. And then of course, return that result. And then we're pretty much done. Hopefully I don't have any bugs. Let's run this to confirm that. And of course I do. It's not a major bug, it's just kind of a typo. I forgot to say not in visit. This should not be in the visit hash set. Let's rerun that. And as you can see, now it works. And the big O time complexity is about as efficient as you can get, even though the runtime on leak code is not. But I wouldn't look too deeply into that. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.